Hello, everyone. If you don't have never met me, my name is Shalane Eckhart. I live in Shaunavon, Saskatchewan, where I work at a daycare. And I went from CLBI from 2018 to 2019, where I got the privilege of taking in some of Boyd, the teacher from last week, teaching on prayer. And I experienced some freedom and healing through Jesus, obviously, but in Boyd's teaching about prayer. So a backstory on the story I'm going to tell tonight is specifically when I experienced freedom from sleep paralysis and nightmares. If you've never heard of sleep paralysis before, it's the feeling of being awake, but not being able to move or speak. And I would often try to call desperately out to my roommate to wake me up, but not being able to speak to just open my mouth. And I also was experiencing in my second year of CLBI some intense, disturbing nightmares that I'd never experienced before. And it was starting to really affect me. And at the time, my friend Mackenzie was doing his internship with Boyd, the teacher from last week, and was often talking about demons and things like that. And I was beginning to think, well, maybe that was that is contributing to my nightmares and sleep paralysis. So on a walk back from Dairy Queen, Mackenzie asked me if I was willing to invite Jesus into my sleep and nightmares. And I agreed. So if you've never heard of Boyd's teaching on prayer, when he teaches a seminar, he normally gives a prayer card that looks something like this. And um, the first part is basically kind of repeat after me that you would say with someone to guide them through this prayer. And I'm just going to read it. So dear Jesus, I give you the blank that I'm struggling with. I give you lordship over the place it has in my life and accept the washing of your blood there. I accept your mercy and forgiveness for struggling with this on my own strength. In Jesus name. Amen. And the second part is um, where you just pray for them. It's not a repeat after me. It says you rest for a moment. I'd like to pray for you. Dear Jesus, I speak your mercy and forgiveness over that person. Lord, Holy Spirit, come and fill him or her. I speak your peace, blessing, and healing in Jesus' name. And another part of the prayer that when praying with Kenzie was praying for me that he just added, it wasn't on the sheet, was Satan, you are so weak that you try to get Shalane when she's asleep because you can't get her when she's awake. <laughs> um, but basically the, chi the Kairos that I experienced after this prayer was an intimacy with Christ knowing that he cares for me and protects me and fights for me even when I'm sleeping. Psalm 4, 8 says, in peace I will lie down and sleep for you alone make me dwell in safety. Or in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, it says, he, he has not destined you for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Christ who died for you so that whether you wake or sleep, you will live with him. So when sleeping, it's impossible to perform to God because um, you're sleeping. You can't try to earn grace in any type of way and in ephesians like in ephesians 2 9 um it says for it is by grace you've been saved through faith not of something of yourselves but as a gift not from god not to result from works so knowing that god was in control allowed me to not only trust god when i'm awake i can try to control and perform but also in things i can control like my sleep so in this prayer i confessed confessed that i struggled with my sleep in my own strength I moved to surrender control of lordship of my sleep to God. Surrendering my sleep to God was incredibly freeing, not only in my sleep, but also transformative in my day, and well, day as well. And I can genuinely say that I have not experienced any type of sleep paralysis or nightmares to this day. So I'm not saying that this prayer card is some sort of magic spell to get rid of nightmares for you. Um, it it wasn't about the nightmares for me. Nightmares were only a symptom of not trusting God with every aspect of my life. So if you're experiencing nightmares or sleep paralysis or something else that isn't ideal that you don't want to experience, look into your life where you need to surrender, have surrendered to God, repent and repent to God. So if you do think of something tonight, don't keep it to yourself or try to hide it. James 5.16 says, confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed. And know that there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. A trusted, faithful friend or maybe even a person in your group tonight can possibly use the tools that Boyd provides 
not saying you have to. Um, it's just a tool that maybe you can pray for each other and experience freedom in Christ. And if you experience healing, um, not just physically, but in, in any type, tell that friend who prayed for you because it will definitely encourage them. I might have waited a touch too long to tell my friend Mackenzie that I wasn't experiencing nightmares or sleep paralysis anymore, but sure he'll forgive me so i hope tonight you can feel vulnerable to share in your group where you want to invite and surrender jesus into each other into each other into your <laughs> um into your situations and yeah so another story of an organization that's really similar um to how boyd functions is wimple or world mission prayer league World Mission Prayer League is an organization that was planning on sending me to the Philippines this year to Nanny, but obviously COVID. So in the World Mission Prayer League handbook, if you turn to page 25, it talks about finances and directly under finances, it says prayer. And in this, in their vision behind prayer, it's very connected to how Boyd teaches on prayer and it being connected to repentance and surrender. When I started teaching or when I started discussing work for World Mission Prayer League before COVID, I had a semi-awkward conversation about wages, how much Wimple workers get paid with Charles and Anita, the directors of World Mission Prayer League. And basically they said, pray and God will provide for you. We can't give you an exact number, but whatever God provides is the number that you'll have needed. Some people, me at the time, would have had a negative gut reaction to that. But why? Why can't I have a secure number that I can rely on? And the only reason that it came down to was a distrust I had in God that I needed repenting and surrendering of. So what ba basically what Charles and Anita were talking about was what Wimple workers called the Wimple way. And basically to summarize that, it's a radical dependence on the power of prayer. Hudson Taylor, a famous missionary that we talk about sometimes is God's work done in God's way will never lack God's provision. Another awesome thing in this handbook that Wimple, Wimple operates with finances is that they don't solicit or they don't outright ask people for money, which is nuts to me. How can people know that you need help or need money if you don't ask for it? But this again turned, turned to pointing out to me how I trust my ability or trusted other people's ability to provide for me over God's. Another awesome thing from this handbook, it's that they don't, they quote, don't check their budget before sending someone into the field. And again, I feel this, how are we responsible? The how could you not do that? And what if, what happens if this happens and this happens? We have all these what ifs, but the prayer league, to quote the handbook again, it says, the prayer league way is to depend on God to meet our needs week to week, month to month, and year to year. And this another this points to another part of their um, handbook where it talks about immediacy, where when they receive funds, rather than saving it, possibly they try to disperse it, the, disperse the resources as they receive it. So they, so ra this basically summarized in the verse Luke 12, 24, consider the ravens, they neither sow, sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more, and how much more valuable are you than the birds? So disclaimer that Wimple would probably like me to put out there is that how they handle finances isn't the only way to handle them. It's not sinful to have a budget. It's not sinful to um, clearly ask people for money and missions. Um, this is just how Wimple was called by God to do it, but it's not, um, we don't judge other organizations that do those things. So my point isn't about a finance talk about how you should handle your money. But for, for me, my Kairos was trusting in God in prayer over my own ability. I was trying to have lordship over my life and struggle to control every aspect. With the use of Boyd's prayer tools and obviously the power of the Holy Spirit, um, I was able to move away from this way of thinking and move towards trusting God. And I'm certainly not perfect in this regard, um, but this practice certainly helped me come to a deeper trust in Christ. So finally, I just want to reiterate 
the dream of the leaders and mine that has for the all of you of for the 72 it's basically to equip and inspire you to do and experience these things in your own life and in your communities you hear us talk about oikos or kairos and prayer and we want to see these happen in your real life in action and the only way something like a kairos can happen successfully is being very closely connected to prayer like the vine is to a branches there are people in our families communities workplaces schools and the nations and dare i say even churches who haven't clearly heard or experienced the gospel in significant tangible ways and the 72 is trying to give you biblical tools to use in your context so here's a metaphor that i enjoy by francis chan and he's he said, basically imagine your pastor challenges you to go to a graveyard and raise just one person from the dead. You wouldn't think of the fanciest sermon to, to convince that dead person to get up from their grave, but rather you'd fall on your face and pray to God that he would move and do something. And uh, that to further make my point is in Ezekiel 37, um, and when I read this chunk of scripture, it might be a little bit long. Think about how it reflects our world in 2021. So it's in the Valley of Dry Bones. So the hand of the Lord was on me and he brought me out of the spirit uh, and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. The bones were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? The sovereign Lord, I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will, I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I'll put breath in you and you will come to life and you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied and was as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked and the tendons and flesh appeared on their skin and covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones of the, are the people of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Sometimes how we feel in COVID. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and settle in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord and have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. So really, that summarizes exactly what the 72 wants to happen. There are people in your community and maybe even you that are experiencing this valley of dry bones, whether that's despair, stress, fear, anger, isolation, hopelessness. These are all outcomes of a lack of gospel and the Holy Spirit breathing breath and true life into us. God wants to, through his power and not our own power, to open graves, bring back, bring back, hope back to our lives bring life back to our families communities countries and nations not through good works but through the power of prayer and the holy spirit and what jesus did on the cross that god sent his only son jesus who is conceived by the holy spirit born to the virgin mary um can, and who was a, a lived a perfect sinless life he was fully god fully human a worthy sacrifice he suffered a terrible unimaginable death on a cross to pay a debt that we owed to take a, a wrath that we deserved to, to have 
He was buried in a tomb, but he didn't stay there. He went down to hell to defeat death. And on the third day, he rose again. He didn't leave us alone. He left us with the Holy Spirit, which the Bible says is actually better than having Jesus beside, physically beside us. And not only are we left with the Holy Spirit, but Jesus has been inside of us. He's also somehow seated at the right hand of God the Father, where one day he'll come back to judge the living and the dead and take away all pain and suffering and, and to bring a life and breath back for all eternity. So the Lutherans in the room probably saw my slight edit on the Apostles' Creed, but that is just what had to happen <laughs> and to make sure I had a re reliable um, presentation of the gospel. But friends, there are people in the world who will live and die and never hear this message. That, that day where Jesus is returning to judge the living and the dead could happen at any moment. And we can be a part of that movement of God to reconcile the word back to him through prayer, even tonight where we're sitting. David Platt, a pastor that I enjoy, says, we don't even have to leave our seats right now to be involved in God's mission in the Middle East or in God's heart for the underground church in China or even the most remote places in the jungle. Through prayer, the Holy Spirit will give us God's heart for the people in our community and even in the nations. So friends, how can we live with urgency of unreached people and for the people in our own communities that haven't heard the gospel or experienced the saving gift of faith? So challenges I have for you in your group tonight is um, to pray, actually pray for each other, do whatever your normal routine it is, but I encourage you to be vulnerable with each other, to look where in your life do you, do you need to surrender more fully to God? Where do you need to repent and believe um, and invite Jesus into? You could possibly use the, to the tools that I talked about. I put them in the chat, um, but James 5 says, confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed in the the effective prayer of a righteous person it accomplishes much. So uh, leaders, if you don't, if you find that no one is feeling comfortable sharing or even thinking of something to share, um, I encourage you to pray for the nations. Social distancing and quarantine can't stop the power of prayer that has on people millions of miles away. There are billions billions of people who have yet to hear the gospel don't have a bible in their own language and many um or have even have a christian in their village and if someone doesn't go or or pray they will live and die and never hear the the gospel so if you a good tool to use to pr pray for the nations tonight if you go to the joshua project there is a daily unreached person of the day it gives you prayer prompts of how to best pray for them or just freely pray for the unreached people but i also put that link in the chat and i also pray that you guys challenge each other to think of someone this week that you could talk to in your own life and at home at a work or coffee shop or church and ask them what's going on how are they doing and if they share something say ask if you can invite jesus into that and you know, might be surprised of what people might tell you and the worst thing that someone could say is no so yeah i highly doubt all three of those things will happen i don't think they will but they're just options and if anything happens someone please tell me a story because i love hear hearing about how god moves in your groups so God's peace and to someone who's not me want to pray as you guys go into your groups. Shalane, thank you very much. That was marvelous. And I, I don't even get to talk to some of you guys that I, that I know pretty well, you know, week by week. So I'm, I'm sorry you're not in group three. I would love to hang out with you, but it, it's great to see you in the big group. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you meet us at every point of need. And we thank you that you have worked in Shalane's life to where, where she needed you. And Lord, some of us are trying to carry burdens that you don't want us to carry. So we point out to us what we can surrender. Lord, give us somebody we can talk with about it or, or just give us the courage to proud our hearts to you. And Lord, give us a burden for those people you put around us that need to hear about Jesus and give us a burden for the people that we don't get to see. They need to hear about Jesus. We 
ask that you would stir up from among us ambassadors, workers to, to go out into the far distant harvest field. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.